Do power tool users really need to use hand planes? I'm gonna give you six reasons why I think they should, plus hand planes that don't need to be sharpened. This video is sponsored by Tursa Knives. A lot of us have the, the bench top joiners or maybe a six inch or even an eight inch joiner, but a lot of us don't have the luxury of having that big aircrafts carrier style joiner that you see in big production shops. So what do you do when you've got a super wide board? You could make a jig and run it through your planer, put it on a board, some shims, and there's all kinds of videos that show you that. What I do is a bit different. First thing is, is I take the guard off my joiner. Now, I, I know. Some of y'all clutch those pearls and you're totally freaking out because you think it's a safety violation. It's totally up to you. Safety is a personal thing. I am absolutely comfortable taking that guard off, performing this one operation, then I put it back on and I join all the rest of my boards with it on. What I'll do is I will run it across that joiner and join as much as possible. And usually I'm left over with just this tiny little strip over on the side. Now I could try to put a piece of plywood on that or, or something and, and run it through the, the planer, but it is way easier and way faster for me just to simply grab a quick plane and knock that part off. Now the entire board is completely jointed. It's flat. I can run through the planer. It makes things way easier for me and saves a ton of time. One of the most common reasons why I have hand planes is to fix the rabbits and dados and grooves that could easily get messed up over the table saw. You don't even realize it until after it's kind of too late, like you're doing glue up and then stuff's just not lining up the way it's supposed to. The reason why this is really common is because of the amount of pressure that's put down on the board whenever you're cutting these types of joints. The longer the board, the tougher this is because you're trying to apply even pressure down as you're pushing the board through the blade but sometimes you don't get that perfectly even pressure across the entire board, especially on the ends. It's really easy to have one end that is cut at one depth and the other end is cut at kind of a different one. And that's simply because it wasn't the same amount of pressure. Everything looks good, but then you go to put that cabinet back in place and you realize that it's kind of sticking out in this area or this area. You try to put that picture frame together and you realize, hey, these joints don't exactly match up. Uh-oh, instead of going right back over to the table saw and trying to recut my board, a lot of times I'm already past that stage and my table saw is not even set up anymore by the time I realize it. What I'll do is just grab a hand plane, usually a rabbit plane or a shoulder plane, hit it real quick, done, move on with my day. One operation that I think is super valuable to have a hand plane is doing mortise and tenons. I like to do my mortises just by using a router and make it a couple passes, getting that done. And then I can work on the tenon and making sure the tenon is fine tuned to fit into the mortise. I'll put in a dado stack or something, start making my cuts and try to sneak up on it as close as I can get. But I try to stay having that tenon a little bit fatter than what the mortise is. It's always easier to take a little bit off than it is to put any back on. Well, it can be a little bit difficult to really fine tune that and get down where you're taking just a tiny bit off to make sure it's the perfect fit. So whenever I get really close to it, I just grab my piece and grab a hand plane and hit up the hand plane really quick. A couple of light passes on each side and then I can slowly test fit it to see if I can get the right fit to it. And then eventually I'm there. Another reason why I think that you should have a hand plane, especially a block plane, is chamfers because I think chamfers just look really good. I think a lot of other woodworkers think so too. You can always do chamfers over at the router table if you want to, or the table saw. There's always more than one way to do anything in woodworking, it seems. But I especially like it on boards where not all the sides are even. Sometimes you have a weird shaped piece or sometimes you have a weird edge that you can't ride up against your your table saw fence and you just need to put a little chamfer on there and that's where a block plane comes in really handy. There are a lot of times where I'm already using my table saw and I don't want to then stop and move my blade to 45 degrees, make one cut and then move it back to 90 and then finish my project. So instead I'll just grab a block plane. Let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor today, which is Tursa Knives. They reached out and asked if I would do a review of their hand planes and I said I could do that. But one big caveat, I have to be 100% honest, good, bad, or ugly. What I had them send me over was a rabbiting plane, which came with a fence as a guide as well. And then they sent me over a bullnose plane, which is a bit of a specialty because it has a blade on the right on the end to try to get into those little nooks and crannies. What I found intriguing about this is the blades are replaceable. So you don't actually sharpen a blade like a regular plane. You just buy a new one, kind of like a razor. Never seen that before. So you have a little knob that you loosen up. You could put the blade in there and both sides of the blade are sharp. So you put one in there, you just push the knob back down 
And as you push it down, it actually pushes the blade out and you can adjust the def stop with that. Once that blade edge is dull, you simply flip it around and use the other side. I spent a couple weeks testing these things out. Some of it on camera, a lot of it was not on camera. And I have to say that I was a little bit shocked at how good it really did. I guess maybe I was a little bit suspect of it. I find that I still like my traditional planes a little bit better for a couple reasons, but this was a better tool than what I really thought it would be. I think one of the downsides is that I can adjust the depth of the blade a little bit easier on a traditional plane. And I felt like this plane kind of took off a little bit more of a heavy shaving than my typical planes would. At the same time, they were good cuts. They were smooth, there was no issues with it at all. So it absolutely works. I think another factor too is that I have my own sharpening system that I use to sharpen my blades. And I feel like that I can get my blades a lot sharper than the ones that come with this hand plane. I'm a little bit hit or miss on the bullnose plane. I don't know that I would put this one in my arsenal for what I do. I felt like the blade kind of extends a little bit too far. So it either doesn't cut or it cuts a little bit heavy. So I didn't really enjoy using this one as much and I probably won't use it for future projects unless it's absolutely necessary. On the other hand, I felt like the rabbiting plane was a serviceable plane. I can see why some people would really like something like this, especially those power tool users that don't want to have a whole sharpening system. I can see them liking this. So I think that a plane like this with the changeable blades does have a place in our woodworking community and there is an audience, I think, for this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take links to all these products. I'm gonna put them down in the description below. I'm also gonna put a link to Tursa Knives. So that way, if you have questions, I'm not the person to ask. Ask the experts. Go to Tursa Knives, ask them. They can answer all the questions about these planes. Again, big thank you to Tursa Knives for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to a couple more ways that you could really use hand planes in your shop. Here's a really handy use for a plane that I use all the time, but I don't usually show it on camera because it, it's kind of just a small thing. And that is taking a little black plane and figuring out what my grain looks like before I actually mill up the boards. It's really easy to think that you have the perfect piece of wood and then you start milling it and you realize, eh, not so much. Or the other way where you're looking for something that doesn't need to be pretty, you want, you want to save the pretty stuff for later, you start milling it and you go, holy crap, there's a whole lot of figure in this. I wish I would have saved it. I usually just grab a black plane hit a couple little areas with it, super light, don't have to do a whole lot of work here, just so I can kind of see what that grain looks like underneath it, and then I can determine if that's what I'm gonna roll with for the rest of the project. What might be one of the most important reasons why you wanna have a hand plane in the shop is trying to fit those doors and drawers. It's inevitable, doesn't matter how much you're trying to be perfect, you go to put that drawer into place and it doesn't quite fit. There's a corner that's a little bit high or a little bit low or something. A lot of people will grab some sandpaper and try to just sand all these areas. It takes a lot more time. Instead, just grab a hand plane hit it real quick, and the next thing you know, you have a perfectly fitting drawer. Now make sure you check out this other video up here. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.